Good evening. The opinions and statements voiced by our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this network. Enjoy the shows. You are listening to WBHM, digital broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Gwen Allen. And I've heard a lot about Gwen Allen from a lot of the places that we've been, such as Ashmore Estates and Dog Patch USA. And uh, shoot, Coyote Chris has nothing but really great things to say about her. So tonight, this is my first exposure to her personally. So we're going to find some things out about her that I didn't know. So let's all find out about Gwen. So welcome, Glenn, to the Paranormal Pride. Thank you for having me. How is everybody doing tonight? Well, I, I know that I'm doing great, and Ron looks like he's doing great. He's he's my husband. He's here in the house with us. So um, in the chat room, we have a few people out there that are listening. I know it'll fill up, and we're going to have lots of questions here soon. And while we were chatting, you said you produce for multiple TV shows. Why don't we talk yes. about that? Yes, what it is is like, you know, we're out here in Salt Lake City, Utah right now. And you know what? We have a, um, a production company that we've had for like 10 years now, Guerrilla Mafia, um, um, Guerrilla Mafia Entertainment Media and Productions. And right now we're in the point being is that we got like, you know, multiple shows plus my paranormal TV show that we got going on YouTube right now. And also we're in the process of going on Soul Central Magazine that is in the United um, you know, Kingdom. It has, you know, over like 300 to 400 something subscribers and all those things that's going on in the media and it's an um, actual magazine that goes out so I do a lot of journalism and presentation and all the things for that too and also for our media company that we got going on we have um, like I said we have Stone Paranormal that's going on through um, our media company right now we have the Yo Sun show we have con artists and we also have a showcase your cosplay and that's another thing that we do like with a lot of people here they're into cosplay Play. We do a lot of charities and causes and, you know, here at our um, cafe here at Irie Coffee Teas and Bobas here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And we just picked up another um, show that is Theories Hub. And that's going to be all about world news and all those things. And I think that him and my husband are going to shoot the first, you know, episode of that. They're going to go um, here at the Leonardo at the museum that's downtown and Princess Diana dresses are coming on collection. So we're getting ready to go and do a whole expose on that and everything from media coverage and all those things for the first, you know, opportunities of his show. So I pretty much, as I said, I got a lot of things that are going on down here. Okay. When you said cons, what do you mean? Conferences or ex-cons? <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, not <laughs> X-Con. When I mean cons, I mean like comic cons and okay. things like, that. you know, people that like to dress up, you know, they Deadpools and Harley Quinns and Batmans and Supermans and all those things. And what we do is through our Showcase Your Cosplay, we do a play on words and car plays is that we get a lot of the local people that are out here that, that, that do it professionally. And even the ones that don't do it professionally, and they all come out and we do a lot of charity events. And, you know, we raise money for like, you know, animal shelters and also that me and Chris here at um, our, our family owned cafe here in um, Utah we also are the drink sponsors for you know the Operation Underground for child sex trafficking and all those things here in Utah so we, we do a lot of we, we're a pretty much a lot into a lot of charity work Oh, that, that's good to hear you know because I know I mean everybody in, should be into some sort of charity if they're you know if they're really into the paranormal to be uh, a non for profit, not for profit. You know, we should all be giving back to the communities that we serve. So I'm glad to hear that you guys are doing that, and it, it makes it makes me proud to say, hey, here's somebody else that's giving back. And, you uh, know, but that's the point being is that, you know, you got to look at it like this is that you got to take the blessings in life as the blessings come in life. And you have to be able to give back to those people that don't have the voice or they are too afraid to have the voice. Or even, you know, we do a lot of anti-bullying and we um here at the store here at Irie Coffee at our, at our cafe right here. You know, we 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 how can I say we do a lot of fundraisers for a lot of the schools, the high schools around here, the football teams, the you know, the the softball teams, all of those things. And I feel that, you know what, that by us giving back to these young people, then then that's something that they can learn, too, that it's okay to give back and to help other people that need to be helped. Yeah, I, that's true, because uh, there's a lot of people out there that need help, and, you know, and not everybody can give at the same level, so it's it's good to bring awareness, and, even, and every little bit counts. So I'm, it I'm, sure does. So, like I said, I'm really glad to hear that. And so the magazine that you write for, are you the main editor or are you are you just providing stories for that magazine? Um, what is happening is that Soul Central Magazine is that I'm a senior ambassador here in the United States. For it. We just came off of doing the um, Soul Central Music Awards in Las Vegas, where we went out there and it showcased a lot of, you know, urban and a lot of, you know, indie artists and things just like that. And it was an award ceremonies for the, you know, artists, art models, all of those things like that. And um, the CEO and creator of Soul Central Magazine is Mark Rowe out of the United Kingdom that's in London. And he's the founder of, you know, the magazine. Magazine. And so me and my husband, Christopher, we're we have been for like a year and a half now. We've been the senior ambassadors here and we we provide content for the magazine. And we also give exposure to the people that are here in the United States of America so that they can be on an international platform instead of just a local platform. Uh, how would somebody go about uh, getting new information to be printed up in that magazine? Um, see, what happens is that this is that that's the funny thing is that people say we have a lot of people because our names and stuff are well known out here in, um, in Utah. But a lot of times, you know what is the point being is that we have no fear with if, if there's something that needs to be, you know, reported or there's a local artist or there's like an um, artisan or if, if paranormal. It doesn't matter who it is. It's like this. Our point being is to give people that exposure in order to be able to promote themselves and to be creative. And that's what I always tell people. And I said, you know, I've been doing this for such a very long time. So I, we like to, you know, help a lot of young people. You know, we teach them about their electronic press kits and we treat them up teach them about YouTube, social media. You know, we do a lot of social media influences. And by having the cafe here, you know, in um, West Jordan, we have the platform that we're able to let them come in. We do all of our interviews here. We do all of our productions here we do all of our charity events and everything is all centralized our um with our cafe here okay it say i have a, a an article i want printed up do, do i just send that to you and say hey this is something i wrote up maybe it's something that you might want to present to um the magazine 
And what we do like this is that, you know, like anything, you know what, we give people the opportunity to send us those articles. And, you know, we also, you know, so that we can, um, you know, preview them and look at them and see if everything is going. And then, you know what, we, um, then if we like them, then you know what, we send them to Mark Rowe. And Mark Rowe has different things that he puts articles about things inside the magazine and all those things. But he's been swamped so much lately because he just got um, distribution in China and also in Japan because me and Chris, we just got through doing Jackie Chan that was here in Salt Lake City at the Leonardo at the museum. We just did an interview with him and we had back VIP press, everything is like that and he was down here doing a charity event for the children. So we're in the process right now of getting that done and getting the cover sold and ad space and all those things just like that. So that's been like a real you know, big thing that that has been going on, but that's the process that is going on. But we also have Soul Central Magazine, and we're also creating another media outlet that's going to be online, and it's going to be completely digital, and that's for Guerrilla Mafia Entertainment. And so people will be able to send and all the interviews and people's electronic press cases and people's, you know, all of the things that they have, you know, like articles and all those things. We will be taking the submissions for that too soon. Oh, okay. Um, Kat asks, is Mark Rowe, uh, the Mark Rowe based in the U.S., or is he the one that's based in the U.K.? He's based in the U.K. Okay. Because there's, I mean, Mark Rowe is such a common name. And there's yes. a couple of them that's involved, you know, you know, you can go out there and you can find five Dave Millers that's involved in the paranormal, you know. <laughs> so the yeah. same with Mark Rowe. So, um how let me let me look at my time here before I start asking you a bunch of questions. So what got you involved in the paranormal? What got me into the involved in the paranormal is that I've been doing this for the last, um, just say, 26, 27 years now. And what started to get me involved in it is like I always tell people is that I'm backwards, is that most people, they go into the paranormal and they're seeking ghosts and doing it. But see, but what it what it is, is that for the last 25 years, I am um, I am what they call I am a high priestess. I am a mambo and voodoo. And so I've been like backwards and dealing with spirits and possessions and God children and all these things and herbs and helping people. I'm a psychic medium. I've been teaching people. I teach a school stone paranormal I've had for 10 years. And I just got to the point where, you know, I was like, you know what, let me go and see what it's like you know, on the other side. And so, and then that's where Stone Paranormal came into view and, um, and it became more of a teaching collective, you know, people coming together, showing their ideas and not, and not making it so much to the point being that we use, you know, all of the, you know, yeah, we use our EVPs, our EMF detectors, you know, we have all those things, but, but inside of our group is, is, is consists of astrologers, numerologists, we have pagans, we have Wiccans, we have, you know, impacts, we have, you know, there's a whole, I, I wanted to take it to a different perspective of something that is more natural and add that into our shows and a lot about history and being able to understand, you know, where you're coming from. And then, you know, teaching people about protection and the things that you got to look out for when you go into a haunted location, the things that, you know, I didn't see, you know, instead of people going and saying, oh my God, I feel that I want you to understand what you're feeling. You understand what I'm saying? And so it, that's where that's where all of that came into it. You know, and so I do a lot of I've been on a lot of TV shows and a lot of, you know, things lately. And even in the past, you know, I used to help, you know, in, in Florida, I used to help the police department, you know, in missing cases. And, you know, I've been in the newspaper a lot of times, you know, because I used to create a lot of festivals and drumming circles and things like that for spiritual people and teak workshops and all of those things. And so when I came into the paranormal field, it's like I had that same ideal and perspective and how I looked at things. And I was just like, why aren't people more people protecting themselves? Why aren't more people really paying attention to these buildings and things that they're going? Why is there so much provocation? Why is there so much, you know, things like that? And then, you know, then they're not worrying about what they're taking home with them, what they're taking home to their families, to their children's or connections or, you know, all those things like that. So that's that's how I got into it. And, and so I started it off in the, the in the in the how can I say in the viewpoint of where people you know they they don't un, they don't understand the part you know that's where I got into shamanism for my blood you know I have Muskogee Creek 
Indian in my in me from the Muscogee Creek Indians up in Alabama, the Cherokee Nation from my grandfather's side. And it's like, you know, I have all of these dang spiritual things and ideas that I did. So I said, you know what? I said, let me get into this field and let me start paying attention and let me see how many people like and help and educate on these these things. I'm about, you know, I'm a demonologist. I teach about all of these things. And that's pretty much how it all came into play, man. Wow, that's a lot. I'm also Native American, but I'm Blackfoot. Mm. So I did not know that. I was always told that I was Cherokee. And then after some family research and uh, visiting with family members, found out, no, great grandma was Blackfoot, not not Cherokee. So, um so it's, you know, that, but, but that's how it all started. A lot of people, when they can't figure out if they can't, they know they got Native American blood and they're not really sure. The first thing they do is they go to the Cherokee because the Cherokee Nation is the Lumbee tribes of the Cherokee Nation. They were the ones that took in everybody, you know, after slavery, the Portuguese, you know, whites, all of them came together. And that was in North Carolina, South Carolina and them areas that was up over there. And that's where the heritage and the derivative of like cultures and people and everything. That's why you'll see some so many people saying that I'm Cherokee because so many people during them times came into the Cherokee people took them in. Right. And the Cherokee have, have better records than a lot of the other nations. Yes, they um, do. And a lot of nations are, are extinct. And a lot of people don't realize that like the Kaw Indians here in Kansas extinct and no, the last full blooded Kaw died about 12 years ago. So, wow. And there's hardly any, there's very little information left on the call. So one of the questions we have in chat is from Ron. He asked where you were from, and we know you're from Mobile because you, you told us that earlier when we were on the phone. Um, but how did you end up in Salt Lake City? Um, you know what? That's a, that's like a big world tour right there. You know, my music all turned all reverse around when my father was in the military and we lived in Japan for four years. I've been to Korea, I've been to Alaska. I've been all over the United States of America, all over the Caribbean. Um, one time because I was curious, I went to Haiti for three weeks because I wanted to see what was exactly going on. And that was a big eye opener. But, you know, it all depended that my brother was coming. He got married and he came from Germany and he asked my mother, you know, economically, you know, what was some of the best places. And so Utah had a lot of things. So him and my mom came out here and then my sister came out here and then me and my husband came out here. And that's how we ended up in Utah. Well, we'll be driving through Utah in a few weeks ourselves, but not not even close to Salt Lake City. We'll be going across 70 and 15. So, <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah, you guys are going to be out there by Moab, right? Yeah, we're going to Vegas. So yeah. it, we're taking yeah, the, the north route. So that's the easy route. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> not from here. Um, for, for us, the south route's better, but um, it'll be cooler anyway. So it is, you know. It will be a lot cooler to think to be rich and thank spirits that you're not coming up here during the winter time because that route over there is treacherous. Oh, I know. Um, in fact. Uh, Part of that part of I-70 after Denver to, you know, that 120 miles there is just really dangerous. Um, you have to have it's, chains and all that. You got to. That's why they got all them ski resorts up there towards, like, right there between Denver. And, you know, after you pass Grand Junction and you start going up more, to, you know, 70 going towards Denver, that that is treacherous up there. And even if you take the back way, 80 is still treacherous. Oh, yeah. It's all it's all kind of. But yeah, we're we're looking forward to checking out some stuff in the warmer weather. So, um, is there anything along that route that's worth stopping for that you know of? Um, you guys are not, you're going to take um, seventy going into Nevada, or are you going to take fifteen going in? Uh, it's it, well, seventy turn seventy ends at fifteen, and so we have to take fifteen from from there. So. So, yeah, we'll okay, be that's all. Okay. Yeah, you know what? You're going to go through St. George. Oh, yeah. And, you know, because once you get off, and there ain't nothing really in St. George, okay? Because right at, I think after you um, get past St. George, it's only 35 miles to um, Nevada. And mm -hmm. if you're going to go and you want to go look at anything, that's why you're there, make sure you go see the. Um, the the Hoover Dam and all that stuff that there. That's oh, really yeah. interesting to see how low that water really is. Oh, because, yeah. you know, 
that's another firm believer that I am, that I'm in my faith that all souls and all spirits go through water. And, you know, and it's that if you really look at one time where it was all the way up to the top, and then if you look at it now, you can see the white lines in the rocks from where the water just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. And soon they're not going to have no water at all. Well, I'll tell you, we've been there a few times. Our daughter lives in Vegas, so we, we go out multiple mm-hmm. times a year. So it's just we don't usually take that north route taking 70 across. So it's like, what's different? I mean, I know Denver. I know Denver well. But you know what, everybody? We're at our first break. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back with Gwen Allen in just three minutes. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The opinions of hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect the opinion of this network. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. To the believer. The evidence is overwhelming. To the skeptic, there will never be enough. Hello everyone. Join Kevin and Jennifer Malik, the host of Paraversal Universe, every Friday here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Also heard on WCET-FM and The Rift. Log on or tune in as they check out the mysteries found within the eight categories of the unknown and unexplained including ghosts and haunted places, aliens and UFOs, theology and mythology, cryptids and monsters, urban legends and folklore, conspiracies, metaphysics, and forbidden archaeology. Listen as Kevin and Jennifer interview the top minds in their respective fields as they share theories and information regarding these unsolved mysteries. For future show and archive information, one can find Paraversal Universe on Facebook, Twitter, and MeWe under various Paraversal Universe headings. So, for excellent talk radio about the unknown and unexplained, check out Paraversal Universe, where all paranormal perspectives apply. Brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society, LTV, and produced by WBHMDB.com. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Gwen Allen. And we've been talking about multiple things. But I'm going to start off with this question that we have in chat for you. Um, Tom McNicholas asks, have you ever produced independent films? You know what? I'm getting to that point right now is that I'm, you know, I'm self-taught in everything that I've done, even from the point being of doing, you know, I've never believed that no such thing as no and did or some or not knowing anything. And then I'm that's something independent films and all those things like that. I'm interested in those things, but you have to build yourself up to that. So I'm to the point right now where producing the shows and getting them together and time wise and the editing wise, all of that, you know what, that's an option. You never know what can happen in the future. No. I I mean, I've gotten involved in a couple um, independent films and some independent independent YouTube shows. 
I don't have anything that has my name on it saying, hey, this is mine. I've just been involved as a, as seen on, <laughs> you know, as seen on Ghost Adventures, as seen in, you know, this film when it comes out, uh, you know, that's that's going to be it. I'm My name will never be, you know, as, as a producer or anything like that. I, I don't have... I don't have that mentality to do that. I'm interested in watching other people do it. You know what I mean? I just don't have any interest in doing it myself. I like this part. I like asking people questions about stuff. I don't want to be in charge of it. That makes sense. You know, that makes a lot of sense to me, but it's to the point of being, I guess I tell people, I said, it's my Aquarius nature to just to be able to do a thousand and one things at one time. It's like, you know, if I'm going to do something, I want to know what it's like from the beginning to the end. I don't like to rely upon people or all those things just like this, because I feel that, you know what, we only use 2% of our brain. And so, you know what, what's going on with the other 98% and, you know, knowledge is, I always tell people knowledge is power, but wisdom will save your life. And and if you can get to the point being that, you know, the resources of these things are out there, if you want to learn it, you can Google it and go on YouTube and, you know, and get the ideas. But it's just a lot of people don't have the motivation to be able to go out there and do it. I also noticed that a lot of people don't have the ideas to make their own ideas, to take an idea and make it something different. You know, I, I don't see even in Hollywood, I don't see the creativity that we used to see so hopefully we'll start seeing some more creativity you know because i mean like ron said the other day what are we on rocky 98 are we you know <laughs> rambo 14 <laughs> like we're not seeing anything new we haven't been to the movie theater in years okay i'm i'm it is because you see they're, what they're doing is they're taking everything now and they're rebooting it and they're adding a little something or they're making it digital or they're making it anime or they're making it in some kind of CGI or something that is different than what it is. And that's pretty much it's like it's the same thing. And that's why even when I was sitting here and you know what, and we created our cafe here in Utah and I was like and I was talking with my mom and I was like, because we've had a wig business for so I said, you know, what? it's time for us to do something different. And so then that's when Irie Coffee Tea's and Bobas came into play and it's like to this point last year we were number three in all of Utah best coffee shop this year we were number two and we we're a mom and pops and then we and it's like we I tell people and when they come in here there's like oh my god it's because we have I'm always creating new things we have like 350 flavors of different drinks we have secret menus we have secret boards we give people options you know 85 different coffees from around the world we have like 70 organic teas and you know and it's the point being it's about customer service and just caring about and listening and you know what and my secret menu is all of my customers i be like listen i come in i'm like if you create a drink and if i like the drink i said let's name it and let's or put it on a secret menu so other people can enjoy it and other people can understand they and people love that part being is that you actually care enough and they and then they get more creative and they start doing things and you know and it just goes there but that can be anything just like you know if we were saying it's like okay this is a paranormal you know a paranormal talk show if we you know in in the paranormal field everybody always is sitting there you know and everybody's thinking that oh it's got to be this way you got to have this equipment you got to be this you got to you know to do this in order to be a paranormal investigator and I say I'm like the only thing you need to do is that you need the you need to do what you love. OK, and if you are curious and if you want to know about the paranormal and all of these things like this, there's an abundance of information out there to help you. And first of all, you got to get over that fear of, you know, of going into locations or going and working with people and everything else like this now. But I don't know. I've just been looking at a lot of things lately and it's just like everybody is getting a little clicky. Everybody is saying this is the way that it has to be. You know, this is the way that it has to be. I, I know, agree. I go a you know, and I'm just like, and I'm like, first of all, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm a grown woman. I am not in high school. I am not kindergarten no more. And I ain't in elementary school no more. And I said, you know what? We already all interested in a field that people think that we are crazy. So now we're going to be clicky crazy. OK, so now, you know, you're going to dictate and tell people and I'm like, and you never that's the whole purpose of the paranormal is that y y there's no direct mission 
to it. You never know what's going to happen. Just because one person goes into a location and they experience a bunch of stuff doesn't mean that the next person is going to keep coming in there and they're going to experience because spirits have their own ways of doing things. And so then they start provoking these spirits. And I mean, I sit here and I watch it all the time and I'm just like, you know what? I'm like, how would you like it if somebody came in your house that you spent your money in, you worked your whole life, you raised your children, you did everything you got. And somebody comes in there and they start provoking you and calling you out your name and disrespecting you all because they want to catch something on camera. You'd be mad, too. Oh, yeah. You know, and you made me giggle. You just made me giggle with some of that. So. Um, because because I, I like I told you, because I'm gonna tell you because that's the thing and that's why you know I feel that sometimes you know I got people that have misunderstandings with me or they don't understand it's because number one the first thing that when they hear voodoo they start thinking about zombies and all this crazy stuff and I'm like you know what don't come judging me unless you're gonna go do the proper research and to understand that this you're, you're disrespecting my grandparents you're disrespecting my ancestors you're disrespecting everything that I believe in and that if you understand that in all things there is a negative and there's a positive way of being able to do it i just believe in nature i believe in what's there in front of my face i've 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 had spiritual possessions through my body i've talked to spirits i've gotten rid of demons off of people i've you know i've gone through so many ceremonies and things and you know i'm the readings and all those things like this and that's why i keep trying to tell these people that when they're doing these investigations i'm like listen you need to do your research before you even step on that property because how are you doing any justice to yourself or the people that you're helping if you don't even understand what's going on it's not for show this is not play play people's lives are you know they they fearing for their children they fearing for their house they work their whole life they don't know if they want to move they don't know if they need a blessing and some people they just go in there and they be like well oh we'll go in there and sage the house well, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes sage is not the key. You got to have other key, I mean, you know, things that will help you in those things. And, I, and this just drives me crazy sometimes. And mm-hmm. I, don't, I, I, I'm serious. It just drives me nuts because I don't understand this that every it, it's become to a point being where everybody thinks that this is just to make money or notoriety now for their name. And I'm just like, this is not what it's about. Oh yeah, uh, and I agree. Sometimes sage isn't the answer. Sometimes it makes it worse. And it makes. Oh my God! Thank you, baby, for saying that. And <laughs> it's not always a demon. I'm sorry, everyone. It's not always a demon. And the bad part is, is when we, as responsible adults, have to go in and clean up the mess that somebody else has created or made worse. And, and think about it. Everything you know from the beginning. Okay. First of all, you know, people were scared as the devil of, of you know, of you know, of demons. You say demon, and people were like, like they, they just like they yeah. steal like a cat the headlight but now every show that you see on tv the first thing that come out of their mouth is oh this is demonic oh this is something <laughs> and, and and you know and this is that and you know what oh you know oh we got this oh this got thrown at me oh this and this and i'm just like first of all um it don't have to be a demon to be a mad spirit OK, I know this for a fact. OK, and I understand about unfinished business. I understand about, you know, attachments to things and all of those things like this. But if you go in somebody's house and this spirit has been trapped in that house for a long period of time or they've been protecting their property and you come in there and you start calling it out of his name. And number one, if you don't understand the spirit in there, the time that the spirit lived or the values or the cultural things is just like this. Some things they might take as an insult and then they're going to get hostile. And then next thing you know, you're going to have a problem. And then you're going to be sitting there thinking, was it worth me going in there and provoking this spirit? And the next thing you know, my job is going crazy. My family is going down. Things around me are dying. I have attachments. I'm not myself. And you know what? And you sit there and and I sit there and I look at this and I'm like, you know what? I'm the same person that you thought was crazy, but I'm the same person that you coming and getting a reading from now and trying to get me to take that off you all because you didn't want to listen and you let your ego do the talking. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I, I'm, I, I know it's like everybody seems to think you know I mean it's not everybody and we all know that it's just a couple TV shows have made the world seem like there's demons everywhere and 
And it could oh be because goodness. the demons are with them and they're they're carrying them with them. It's Thank not just, you. they're everywhere. They're just in their back pocket. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something right there. The more and more I'm talking to you, the more and more I'm starting to love you because you know what? Finally, somebody's starting to understand exactly what I'm talking about. I'm like, you know what people don't understand is that demonic possession is real. OK, people sell their souls all the time to do. get a little bit of something or a little bit of fame. But you know what? What you have to give in return is a whole lot worse than what it is. It's like this. And then you got to understand is that when you are in the public's eye and you also give people, you know, you got to think about it. What about all these new paranormal investigators and all these people that's going out here? And if you even look at, you know, the YouTubes and all these things like this, it's pretty much they all seem to be scripted. They all think that they got to go. They give a little bit of history. Okay. They give the intro. I'm telling you, think about it. This is how they goes. They give a little intro. Then they go in, they do a few interviews, okay? And then next thing you know, the first thing that you know, but people don't understand it takes hours and hours and hours in an investigation. Sometimes you might be sitting in that dang spot for for friggin' ever and nothing ever happens, you know? So the little bit of, so you got to think, then the little bit of evidence that they do get, they're going to sensationalize it. Oh, they're going to start, oh my God, oh my God, you know? Oh, and they're going to start doing, they're going to start, you know, they're going to start making it seem like it's, you know, like, oh, like it's this big thing. And like, but they don't tell you on TV that they have been sitting in there for like five, six hours, you know, like I'm saying, and ain't nothing happened. So all of a sudden it's like, number one, what's going to happen? They're going to start faking evidence. OK, in order to keep them ratings up or they're going to start sitting there screaming the word, oh, it's a demon. Oh, my God. Oh, this, this, this and this and this and that. And they're and, and, and in all actual reality. A lot of times, you know what? And then I'm sitting here thinking, they say, oh, did you see that orb? I'm like, I seen a, um, a bug go by. <laughs> you oh, yeah. know, I'm just like, I, I know, and and I'm I'm with you 100 percent because I have seen overreactions from the smallest things on on TV, and I'm I'm blown away. First off, because I've been in situations where a a fold up chair has been thrown across the room at me, not once but twice, mm. and I still didn't run from the building like my hair was on fire. Okay. I did come up the stairs and said, that was freaky, and you need to come check this out, Ron. But I did not run from the building like my hair was on fire, okay? I probably should have, but I didn't. And, yeah, it does kind of creep you out a little bit to know that something has enough power to do that. But, but you I know, still but the didn't thing, overreact. You can't overreact because you got to understand is that – Spirits feed off of energy, any kind of kinetic energy, any kind of energy you putting out fear, happiness, whatever it is like this. They can that they can latch on to that energy and they can use it to manifest itself. Just like you see people going out there and they have those um, they have those um, equipments that let out pulses of electricity and all those things like that. What they're doing is like, you know, what? it's like instead of just going into a natural situation and being able to let the let the energy flow naturally the way that they're supposed to then you're going to get so that to me is like you know they we who knows what they feel on the other side do they feel pain do they feel love do they feel you don't know we don't know what's how our equipments and all those things are happening so that's why i bring in in my investigations and i bring in psychics i bring in mediums i bring in people like dousing rods you know you know shamans and all these things like this people who work on that other side all the time and I let them come in on a natural basis. And then, you know, what? and that's how we do our investigations. And we are a teaching collective to let people know that, you know what? I don't care. I got priests on deck. I, you know, Catholics, I got people. Everybody is like, you know, I'm like, listen, you know, um, this is what's going on. This is how it is. And how can we go about doing this? So a lot of my stuff is more documentaries, historic, historical, and all those things just like that, because I want people to understand 
why the ancestors or why those spirits are the way that they are, the migratory patterns they took, their eating lands. You know, why was this land sacred? Why was this water sacred? Why is it that, you know, and then people and I'm like in all these places that people go to and, and it's like, can you ask me? So I, mean, I got to ask to everybody this. OK, why does everybody feel like they got to keep going to the same locations over and over and over again? It's like you have they feel like you have not investigated unless you've gone to these the certain locations. If you haven't gone to Bobby Mackey's or you haven't gone to the Washu Club or you ain't going to like and it's like everybody goes to the same place over and over again. And it's like in this place, Utah is haunted as as can be there's so many ghost towns and things so why do they keep going to the same place over and over again yeah i don't know i i you know i i'm always looking for some place new and different and excited as heck when i find some place that's off the beaten path that nobody has talked about you know to where i can go out there and say i found this place you're not going to believe what i found you know, there's that. Or I can't tell you about this place that I found, you know, so. Uh, it just baff- it just baffles me is that maybe it's because, like I said, it's like, you know, and like in the Native Americans, I have Aoka, I'm backwards, okay? And I mean, it's because I've seen some of the stuff that goes bump in the night. I understand that, but I don't understand is that, you know what, that as a paranormal investigator in this day and time and this day and age, and it's like, it's like it's so scripted you got to be a certain way it's like you know i feel like i'm back in high school again if i don't have the right emf detector or the right spirit box or i don't have this or i don't know all the technical you know mumbo jumbo and all stuff and i like you know what i believe in technology and i believe that all of those things are working for a reason but once you start to rely upon those things you lose the true gift and the true piece of equipment that creator gave you and that is yourself because you can because most people can go in there and make their hair stands up on the back of their arms. And that's letting you know that something's getting ready to pop off. <laughs> OK, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, why? Well, you know, that I, I want people to rely more upon what is natural and not be so intimidating when they go into a location that maybe a spirit or something can come to you. And then you sit there. And, you know, you're, you're talking to a child. I want you to know if you're talking to a child or not, or is that something disguised as a child talking to you, trying to get you all, you know, in that emotion. And the next thing you know, boom, it got you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I mean, and that's a, one of the things that people don't seem to get is that why why do we always seem to accept that child spirit when more than likely that child spirit isn't really a child? Yeah. And, you know, and nine times out of 10, I'm being real serious. OK, unless that that's that location is like one of them old locations. And, you know, back then, children's life expectancies was not that long. OK, and that, you know, it was a house and a family. They built the family. You know, they built the house. They lived on the land. They've done everything that they've done. Then, you know what? I kind of, you know, I, I can believe it if I feel a little child spirit that's going on. But if I'm going into a sanitarium or I'm going into a, you know, in the old hospital, you know, not like an old, like, you know, a jail or something like that. If I see like a little kid spirit coming up, I'm going to be like, hmm, something ain't right with this picture. You know, the cookies ain't dunking in the milk right. You know, that's going to make me think of what's going on. And people don't understand is that in 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 the pagan sense, they call it glamour. And what it is is when something portrays itself to be something else that it's not. And normally it goes on an emotional thing. It's because people don't think, just like we're psychic, some spirits can be psychic too. They know what's going on. So you know what? We're at a perfect time for our next break. So if anybody has any questions out there in chat, please make sure you ask them. If you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama, we will be back with Glenn Allen in two minutes. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. To the believer, the evidence is overwhelming. To the skeptic, there will never be enough. Hello, everyone. 
Join Kevin and Jennifer Malik, the host of Fairversal Universe, every Friday here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Also heard on WCEC FM and The Rift. Log on or tune in as they check out the mysteries found within the eight categories of the unknown and unexplained, including ghosts and homeless places, aliens and UFOs, theology and mythology, cryptids and monsters, urban legends and folklore, conspiracy, metaphysics, and forbidden archaeology. Listen as Kevin and Jennifer interview the top nine in their respective fields as they share theories and information regarding these unsolved mysteries. For future show and archive information, one can find Paraversal Universe on Facebook, Twitter, and MeWe under various Paraversal Universe headings. So, for excellent talk radio about the unknown and unexplained, check out Paraversal Universe, where all paranormal perspectives apply. Brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society, LCD, and produced by WCHMDB.com. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride, and I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Gwen Allen. She is a very animated guest tonight, and I'm really having a great time. And I really, I should just sit back and just let her go, and then I'd just have the night off, so it'd be great. But we got some questions, <laughs> but she can't see the chat, so I kind of have to be in the middle here. So we have a question from your lovely husband, and he says, what do you like to investigate more, ghosts or aliens? I knew he was going to say that, okay, because he knows that I have a thing about aliens too, man, is that anything that is in the para or the paranormal or anything just like that, I've, I got my eyeballs on it, man. I've had too many experiences with, with, with paranormal, aliens. <laughs> Bigfoots, you know, you name it, anything that is pretty much paranormal. And I'm going to tell you something. I think I, I like it all, man. If it's got anything to do with it's not normal, I'm, I'm about it. I'm just a weird child like that. Well, the, I mean, where you live, isn't uh, Utah one of the places where there are a ton of sightings of Bigfoot and aliens? Girl, don't even get Utah started because Utah is jacked up, okay? Because I'm going to tell you something. There's all kinds of UFO sightings. There's all kinds of up here in Provo. They've had Bigfoot sightings. You know, like I'm saying, if we look like, you know, you can look in the sky. We was up over there in Big Cottonwood one time, and, like, I swore I looked in the sky just like I saw on Ancient Aliens, and there was something that was hovering right there. And then I, right when I got to tell everybody to look up, and all of a sudden it just zoomed off, and it was gone nowhere. And I was like, oh, my God goodness we were like we were like you know ace minus 10 seconds of getting probed for a minute there you know i was like all i wanted to do was barbecue you know i'm like here i am you know we about to get abducted out here and i remember um and also we've been to skinwalker ranch too oh have you been out to the uh that ranch in nevada the williams that williams ranch that's uh in panache nevada no, but now since you had said something, I might be making my way on up there. That's a, So what's going on up there? Well, it was on Ghost Adventures recently, and they were having all kinds of UFO, Bigfoot, and paranormal sightings. And it's also a bed and breakfast type branch. So, and, they, just, so they just have people go out there and sleep in it. I, I don't know. I haven't been out there yet, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's about... 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, I'd say about an hour and 45 minutes from uh, St. George. St. George. So it's past. Um... You know where the Overland Saloon is in, in Nevada? So is that going out more? Um, is that going towards um, Eureka? You know, out towards that area like Reno and stuff? No, it's closer to, to Utah. On It's on the east side. So it's it's off of 15 going north. 
from huh? uh, St. George. So it's only like, it looks like it's only about, the way you have to go, it's about an hour and a half. But as the crow flies, it looks like it's only like 40 miles from St. George. So it's so it's right there on that border. Yep. Um, and you know what? I'm going to, after all of this, y'all going to have to give me, um, you know, send me a message and give me a little bit of information about that so I can see <laughs> you know, what's going on. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm like, I've already... Um, I'm on this historical sites and historical ghost towns, and we just did Stockton, we did Bower, Utah, and we also did Ophir, Utah for our um for our our ghost towns, and then for our historical sites, we just did the routes going up towards Lava Hot Springs, we did Soda Springs, we did the area of Hooper, because and it's funny that all of those things were leading up because we just got back off the Bear River Massacre spot. Oh well. I said, I know there's quite a bit of stuff in Utah, but it's just a matter of everything's so spread out and there's nothing in between places to, to see either. You know, see, but, that's but I do see, like you know, the speed limit. I do like being able to go 80. Oh, oh, yeah, you can get up and go on speed, the roads around here. But you want to know the great thing about Utah is, is that if you want to find the paranormal or you want to just do the haunted trails, then you need to follow the mines and the railroad. And luckily the railroads lead you to, you know, different places and everything else just like that. You know, that were, you know, a lot of concentration of mining and, you know, and the ore and then the people and the ghost towns and all those things. And that's what the great thing about Utah is, is that you can follow those roads and they're going to lead you to something. There's something going on in on all corners, Ogden to Layton to going to Provo and all those places just like that. You never know what you're going to get, but there's a lot of spots over there. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, someday I'm going to check out some of it. I know I'm going to be checking out something on this trip when we go to to Vegas. So I just don't know what yet. Yeah. So, you know, you know, because the, the, the side that you're going on right there, that's like the butt, the butt end, you know, of, of, <laughs> all the, of all the good stuff. All the good stuff is like going in towards Tuella and, you know, Provo and all those areas and things just like that, because that's that's where the good good is going on. But I but when we just came back, when I was sitting and I was telling you guys about the Bear River Massacre. And we went and did our show out there. And what it was that people was like, how do you get these people to do these interviews? How do you get, you know, certain, you know, you know, how did you get them to let you do this location? I'm like, I asked. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I was respectful. I went, you know, and I, I introduced myself. I told them what we're about. And so we had a Shoshone, the Shoshone chief take us around. OK, and he went and he showed us all the spots. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to take you someplace because I see that, you know, I feel it because I was feeling all my 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 psyche was like on. I was I was hearing my people, man. I was like and I kept asking him stuff and he kept looking at me like crazy and stuff like how did you and I told him I said I'm a medium this is the way my granny was my great grandmama this is the way it is it's something I've been born with since I was a little kid I ain't read none of this in no book and I started talking about the people and I said why did they lie about how many people were killed here on this spot okay and because it shows only 200 and something people on the records, if you're going to do any research, that's what they're going to tell you. But it was over 400 and something people because what it was is when General Connor came in from Stockton and came into Idaho, which this man hated Indians. OK, every place he went, he was in the Indian Wars, everything. And when he went over there in the, in the shop, in the shop, I mean, then the chief told us, he said, if he would have got there three weeks earlier, it wouldn't have been four to six hundred people that died. It would have been three thousand Native Americans that died because all of them were wintering down there by the sacred hot springs. Uh, and so you know, I'm telling you, it was, it, you know, and anybody that knows their history. And I said, well, then that explains to why you're looking at me a certain way right now when I asked you why 
is there more souls and more spirits crimes? And he said, that's because when Connor and them came down there, they took all the women and the children. The, the women were getting raped and then they were getting killed in front of their children. And he said that they took the babies and swung them around like helicopters and bashed their heads on rocks. And they threw a lot of the bodies into the water so they wouldn't get counted. Oh, that's, mm, that's disgusting. Okay. And so when we went there, you know, we did our EVP and we did our spirit sessions because he took us to the sacred hot springs and the original spot where the Bear River Massacre began, you know, because after he started, I started talking to him and I started telling him, you know, all this stuff. And he looked at me and then when he saw that I that, that I, I could see and I knew it, he goes, I'm going to take you guys somewhere. And he took us by the hot springs where, and right across from where the massacre happened. And he then he told me, he says, Gwen, the reason that you kept seeing bodies in the water is this is the reason why, because and I was like, now that makes sense to me. And so it was one of those paranormal investigations where if, you know, most people wait hours and hours because they're just looking for evidence, but this was more of an investigation of the people and the spirits, and that those spirits were not used to us, and they were weary because look at how they died, and, and you know what, and it's like, and ever since then, those spirits, something has been on me, and it seems like every location that I've gone to, I went to Soda Springs. Next thing you know, it has something to do with the Shoshone and the Bear River Massacre. I went and did Stockton. Come to find out, the person who went and killed all the people in the Bear River Massacre, you know, was General Stockton, and that's where in the first place in Utah, they had electricity, they had telephones. That man started the mining around here. OK, and I didn't even know all of this until I just got to that location and I started doing the research and I was like, wow, look at this. Ain't this about something? Mm. So I think what my moral is, is that when paranormal investigating, you have to understand is that I think that everybody needs to stop thinking that it has to be a certain way. And it has a lot to do with the people and the people, how they lived and how they died and the land and the history. Because I think that a lot of these spirits have a tale to tell, but people ain't listening. That's true. I think they get very upset when, in fact, I have, someday when we meet, I'll tell you the story about why I got invest, got involved in this one location and had to tell the truth because the spirits were irritated that the truth wasn't being told. And it forced me to spend years investigating their their history so that I could give their history so that it would stop. So they, these spirits wanted their history told correctly. So I don't know. It was, it was fun. Um, I do have some questions for you in the chat. One of the questions in chat is from... Um, we're going to go back to cats because she wants to know more about Skinwalker Ranch. And I, that's too much, too much stuff to go into before our break. What Dara asks, what is your favorite location to investigate? My favorite location that we were able and that we investigated so far was, I can say was the Bear River Massacre spot that we did. Okay, that's you know, because when we went up there, that kind of hit home because of my, you know, my shamanism and all the things that we were doing and everything just like that. So, yeah, so, so got that. So that'll be interesting to hear more about because um, you, you filmed there correctly, correct? Yes, I did. So, so that that'll be good to see. Is that going to be on your YouTube channel? It's already on the YouTube channel. Okay. So you guys can go out and check that out on the YouTube channel. I know I shared the link in both chats, so you you should be able to get to that. So um, let me see. Got three more minutes. Uh, what area or town in Utah has the most UFO sightings? That would be towards Skinwalker Ranch and up towards the mountains. Oh, wow. So, And since we still got a little bit more time before that break, what type of equipment do you like to use? A lot of the equipment that I like to use, I like my EMF, my um, spirit box detector, and the greatest piece of equipment that I like to use is myself. 
you know, because I know that I'm not going to sit there and be going through and I rely upon them because a lot of it is like my psych, you know, being a psychic medium and being able to, you know, take care of, you know, just looking at things from a perspective of them coming and just talking to me right there. I, I agree. I think that uh, anybody who ignores the things that they're feeling when they're on an investigation is missing out on a lot. Listen, it's like I always I tell I tell people, you know, is that, you know what, you have to be able to, you know, involve other people around you and not be scared to, um, you know, to have people around you and all those things just like that, because you never know when those people are can help you or they can't help you or, you know, is if they know something or, you know, and this people just think that their way is the only way and that there is no other way. No, there's all kinds of ways. It's just a matter of which way is the best way for you. Yep. And, and that's the point being is that they have to be able to look into themselves and be able to see, you know, what is going on and not sit there and just feel like they have to conform. They need to be able to conform to their own opinions. Yep. So, everyone, this is our top of the hour break is coming. So if you guys have any questions in the chat, when we come back, we're going to be talking about Skinwalker Ranch and some other things. So if you have any questions, please get them asked. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting in Birmingham, Alabama. Go get yourself a drink. Do what you need to do. But be back here in five minutes because I don't want you to miss a second of Gwen. Because if you miss a second, you've missed out on a lot. So go get your drink and come back here in five minutes, everyone. Thank you. Getting carded for green cards. I'm Steve Rappaport, Fox News. Immigrants' rights groups blasting the Trump administration's new rule for green card eligibility. The government could deny immigrants green cards if they're likely to seek out government assistance, like Medicaid and food stamps. Acting Director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Ken Cuccinelli. Our rule generally prevents aliens who are likely to become a public charge from coming to the United States or remaining here and getting a green card. The rule is set to go into effect in October. The National Immigration Law Center is planning a court challenge, saying the policy penalizes immigrant families who struggle to make ends meet. Fox is Rachel Sutherland in Washington. The Justice Department filing charges against a friend of Dayton mass shooting suspect Connor Betts. Authorities saying Ethan Colley lied on a federal firearms form. He also acknowledged uh, that he had purchased four, uh, four Betts body armor, as well as um, the upper receiver of an AR-15 weapon and the 100-round double drum magazine that was ultimately used by Betts in the August 4th shooting in the Oregon District. U.S. Attorney Benjamin Glassman says there's no evidence Kali participated in planning the shooting that left nine people dead. Attorneys for Bill Cosby asking an appeals court to overturn his conviction. Cosby was convicted last year of sexual assault and sentenced to three to ten years in Pennsylvania State Prison. Among the defense's complaints was testimony allowed from other accusers and why a non-prosecution agreement from 2005 wasn't honored. Fox's Gernal Scott. Stocks sliding on Wall Street. The Dow plunging 391 points, the Nasdaq losing 96, and the S&P 500 gave back 36. This is Fox News. At TD Ameritrade, they're reinventing how you invest. Whether you want to place a trade on Facebook Messenger or get market news from your smart speaker, TD Ameritrade's technology is designed to bring the market to you. See what's new at tdameritrade.com slash innovation. Member SIPC. The Trump administration making changes to the Endangered Species Act that could put species in greater danger. The changes unveiled by the Interior Department allow federal authorities for the first time to take into account the economic cost of protecting a particular species. The Trump administration's move will reduce regulatory burdens, but conservation groups charge it will also drive more creatures to extinction. At least 10 attorneys general have protested an early draft of the changes, saying they put more wildlife at greater risk of extinction. At the White House, 
John Decker, Fox News. Guards in the federal prison unit housing Jeffrey Epstein were reportedly working extreme overtime shifts because of staff shortages at the time of his apparent suicide. Attorney General William Barr says the FBI and the Department of Justice Inspector General will investigate following Jeffrey Epstein's death. In remarks to law enforcement officials in New Orleans, Barr said he was angry to learn that the Metropolitan Corrections Center didn't keep Epstein secure. We are now learning of serious irregularities at this facility that are deeply concerning. Epstein had pleaded not guilty to federal sex trafficking and conspiracy charges and was awaiting trial. Fox's Tanya J. Powers. A heat wave gripping portions of the Midwest and southern U.S. with the heat index feeling as high as 117 degrees in some spots. The National Weather Service says expect more of the same tomorrow, but an approaching cool front should ease the extreme heat by Wednesday. It was a premature celebration when someone put up welcome home balloons at the home of former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich Friday night. Sources tell Fox News the disgraced Democrat was nearly out the door of a federal prison when his commutation was put on hold. A member of the Trump administration expressing concern about a backlash. Blagojevich was convicted of corruption charges, including trying to sell President Obama's old Senate seat. I'm Steve Rappaport, and this is Fox News. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is five minutes after the hour. Well, welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Gwen Allen. And in case you guys hear some background noise and stuff, she is working in a cafe at the same time that she's doing this. So please be aware that she is she is multitasking right now. So I sure I sure am, but you know what? I'd rather work for myself than work for somebody else. Yeah, and I totally understand and respect that. So, so you guys just be aware that that's what some of this is. It's not just being rude. She's trying to be completely respectful and giving you guys her time as well as giving me her time while she's giving her customers the time that they deserve as well. So um, one of the questions that we had from chat was from Kat. She was Want, she wanted you to, to tell more about the Skinwalker Ranch and the things that occur oh. there. Well, you know what the great thing about it is about Skinwalker Ranch? Everything that you read on the TV mm-hmm. is pretty much is is factual okay that is not no play play i heard the silent you know the silent drones i've heard you know all of those things just like that the helicopters the cthulhu babies all those things and they and then the man that they even say that is there you know about the men like it's a coconut okay and i'm gonna tell you something we experienced all of that stuff because when i went there let me tell you something i had just got out the hospital when i found out i had died i was a diabetic and so my husband, I guess his way of being able to say, oh, you know, let's go and do something. Let's go to Skinwalker Ranch. Girl, time we got there and we turned around and went to one around the corner. All of a sudden, all these black dogs came out of nowhere. OK, and it was like. All these black dogs came out of nowhere and it's like they started to surround the car and I seen this light somewhere and I was like telling my husband and everybody that was in the car. I was like, yo, we got to get up out of here. Something ain't right. And so then we went up and I went looking for the Cthulhu babies inside of the water. Well, I asked my spirits, I said, where is this set? And so it we were driving and driving and all of a sudden we came up to the source of water. And we and I said, stop right here. They're telling us that we need to stop right here. Here it is. We stopped right there. All of a sudden, I got out the car and I could just feel the energy and something was leading me to this water. And I was sitting there and I was like, yo, what is this? You know, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, that same car where we saw the black dogs 
came out of nowhere. I do not know where this man came from or anything. I swear it was like one of them sci-fi old school things that you would have seen inside the thing he had on this black friggin' suit that looked like a do- I don't know if anybody's ever seen Doom before, okay? Mm-hmm. Like the spice is the life. The life is the spice. He had on the Doom suit. It had no insignias. It had nothing on it. And he was sitting there the whole time he was eating these sunflower seeds, but he didn't have a bag of sunflower seeds, but he kept spitting these seeds out. And so that already had me like, mm, what's going on here? OK, this dude looks like he's like men in black secret service, however you want to do it. And he's just coming out of nowhere. And we were sitting there and I was like, OK. And he comes up to us and he says, so what made you stop here? And I'm just like, well, you know, I, I told him straight up. I said, I'm looking for the Cthulhu babies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't, you know, I wasn't mincing no words or anything like this. I was like, listen, I'm going, I'm looking for the Cthulhu babies. And he starts looking, he says, oh, and then he starts laughing. And I said, yeah, I heard a lot about Skinwalker Ranch. So I wanted to come up here and see what was going on. And the whole time, mind you, this man's still eating sunflower seeds and spitting them out. And we never, and I never seen him not once put his hands into a bag of sunflower seeds. So we're sitting there, and, he, and I told my skin that I was looking for it. And at first, he denied it, and then he says, "Well, I was just wondering why you parked here, because he says people got murdered here." He goes, "No, people got people die here on this corner." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, oh. "I'm thinking, I'm thinking." Oh, wait a minute. I said this. I said I had just gave an offering to the water and was listening to the spirits and everything. And it was weird because I I could hear the children in the water and everything. And here comes this man in a doom suit telling me that we're exactly where we parked our car at is that people die there. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And so we were sitting there. And then finally, after a while, he kept looking at my necklaces on my neck because I had all of my spiritual necklaces on my neck. And, and he kept looking, he kept smiling at me. And I was like, oh, boy. I said, here comes the probing. <laughs> okay. I'm like, we're getting, we're getting ready to go down. You know, it's, you know, I was like, this is, I said, this is it. And then he sits there and he says, Gwen. I'm like, and then I'm like, how does this dude know my name? Okay, because he didn't ask us our names or anything else like that yet. He, he was like, well, Gwen, if you, he goes, after he denied it, he goes, Skinwalker Ranch is right there across the street from you. There's the ranch right there. Huh. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, my God. And then it was so funny is that afterwards he, I was sitting there looking and I was like, I was like, I was kind of like crazy because I couldn't believe that this man was sitting here after he told me he didn't know nothing about Skinwalker Ranch. Then all of a sudden he's sitting there looking and he's telling me that, you know what, that there it is right there across the street. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And so then he asked for all of Then that's when he asked for our IDs and everything just like that. And it was like, you know, and then it's like we went into the car and it's like my husband was still recording. And then all of a sudden our recording went blank and then it turned back on when we reviewed it. And then we looked at one of the pictures and you can see that the guy's eyes, actually you can see him turning a little from the reptilian yellow and back in the video. Hmm. And I was like, I told him after that, I said, yo, I said, we got to go. I said, I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to be able to go through all of this stuff and all of these things just like this. And he was like, you can stay, but we noticed. I was like, no, we're getting ready to leave. And so we left. And as we left, we saw like four or five police cars coming up the road and everything. And it was just weird. And I was like, and I told him, I said, I'm never coming back here again. Oh, and so you haven't been back. What'd you say? So you haven't been back. I ain't been back since they want me to go so bad, but I'm just like, I haven't, I'm like, I'm not, I, I, I can't do it, man. That's, that's too crazy, man. Just the mystery and the history and it's changed hands so many times. There is something that is going on in Skinwalker Ranch. And you know, it is it's from alien to paranormal to they, they have sightings of all kinds of stuff. And there's a reason why they don't let nobody go around there. What do you think about the area 51 not not the people storming it because i think that's stupid but do you believe that there's something in area 51 that's hidden from us 
I believe that there's a reason that it is the way that it is. And it's been going on from a long time, from even from the Roswell crash to the even the crash before Roswell and all the, you know, the, the micro engineering and everything that they've been doing on those, you know, on, on crafts and everything has been going on all over Europe and all of those things like this. We, you know, I look at it like this. There's a lot of things that are that are confidential and not being told to us. And I believe that out there that they are experimenting on, you know, different, you know, aircrafts and different things and all those things like this. But, you know, they're not going to sit there and tell, they're not going to sit there and just tell you, hey, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And then it wouldn't be top secret no more. Well, and, and it could be dangerous for us to know. Um, you know what? It's to the point being is that it's the the only danger that there is that it is to that that is for us to know about is the danger of that if people are ready for that kind of information and actually to, you know, admit that that's what's going on. But, you know, our ancestors and the ancients have been talking about it for the longest time. And they've been writing, you know, on cave walls, pyramids, all these things like this and letting you know the Native Americans talk about the sky people, the ant people, the reptilians. You know, the Egyptians had it all over their walls, the Aztecs, you know, the Vermanas from the Hindus and all those things just like that. There has to be something to it if people are telling the, telling the tale, the same tale all over the world and that we have pyramids that are in alignments with things that a normal person sitting on the ground is not going to be able to just put that together like that. There had to be information. A lot of these things can only be seen from the sky. So it's the point being is that do you do you want to look at the true facts of what's really going on or do you want to sit there and just keep your, you know, keep your blinders on and just act like it never happened and think that we're the only civilization and that we're the ones out there that are so, you know, to the point where, you know, that we're we're the all knowings, but we can't recreate what the what the what those uncivilized people did. That 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 just baffles me. Right. Uh, what I find is amazing is how much technology was created between 1940. Well, from about the time that the first aliens from the Roswell incident to now, how how much we've changed just since Truman. Really, let's go back to Truman. How you know, much they- changed? Who was it? It was um, was it President Roosevelt that they said that actually had um, a secret meeting with ETs and all those things like this and made, you know, a deal with them and all this stuff just like that. And think about it. Look at look at the microwaves. Look at Velcro. Look at night vision. Look at all of these things right here that they say that those were, you know, micro engineered from, you know, reverse technology of, you know, of things that they found during those crash sites and everything. And see, that's paranormal. What we're talking about right now, because that is not the normal. That's not something that happens every day but you cannot discredit what MUFON has got all these accreditations of all these people that have had these sightings and had UFO sightings and that have been abducted. they have doctors that are finding pieces of metal that are not from this earth that are implanted into people and all of these things like this and I think that what it is is that they don't want to have like a mass hysteria but they're slowly but surely indoctrinating tv shows and things on the internet and you got all these conspiracy theorists and all these things just like this so they're slowly but surely indoctrinating it into our society but the point being is that fact is fact is that our ancestors and the people before us they talked about their civilizations being created from the people from the sky you understand what I'm saying? And they, they they gave depictions of these things on their walls, their murals, you know, just like if you look at the Aztecs, they have pictures of Aztec living Mayan people, Aztecs, Mayans, and on their pyramids, they have them walking besides dinosaurs. Well, how was that possible when the dinosaurs were extinct millions of years before those people even start building them pyramids? But they have... There, but they have that exactly what them dinosaurs look like. You know, no bones, no nothing. It was it was the complete dinosaur, and they had their ancestors walking next to those dinosaurs depicted on these pyramids. Right. How can you explain that? I, you know, I have no clue. I mean, was it sharing knowledge sharing? Was it time travel? Do we know? 
We don't. You, you know, never right? know. What, what is the purpose of all of these pyramids? What is the purpose that they're all over the world? Why is it that, you know, what people sit there and say, why are we finding these bases of these civilizations all over the world? And I said that, you know what? I said, let's break it back to the old school days and let's think about the Pangean theory when everything was connected and there was only small land bridges for people to walk over. OK, and that, you know, and sailing that that means that we have to stop saying that the ancient people are stupid when they weren't stupid. They were highly intelligent. They knew navigation, astronomical arithmetic, all of these things just like this. And to this day, we cannot recreate what they've done. No. Now, why is that possible? And we have technology. Yeah. And. I have no clue as to why. It is amazing when you think back how how in the world did they build build those pyramids? How did they get those stones on top of each other? What was the purpose of those pyramids? Well, like I said, unless we go back in time and talk to the people who did it, we're we're never going to know factually why. And, you know, and even now we have archaeology, they have only been able to look at a tiny piece of Egypt. They haven't even dug up all the good stuff. But see, people don't remember that there's things that are people that were sacred and that people looked after the land, the Magi, the people that kept the secrets of the desert, you know, the, of the tombs and all those things like that because of grave robbing and all of those things just like this and is that there's more to the puzzle that they can't even they they don't, that none of the great pyramids of Egypt were used as burial mounds. There's no burials in it. They were buried in the, the Valley of the Kings and the Queens and, and different tunnel systems and all these things like this. But they're finding that there's evidence that those pyramids created energy. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that, that, that so what was that energy being used for? Nobody's going to know. And the good thing is, is we're, we're at a break. So okay. <laughs> we'll have to come back and figure out where, where we, well, we're going to have to try to remember where we left off. That's always the fun part. Everyone, you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We have a three-minute break. So go get yourself a drink of water and get yourself back here. Because like I said before, you miss a second, you missed a lot. So come on back here in three minutes and I'll be waiting for you. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Several U.S. presidents are on record talking about the UFO mystery. Yep. Presidents Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, both had UFO sightings of their own, but the current presidential campaign might be the first in which UFO disclosure has been championed by a major party candidate. DIA, CIA, it moves around, is operating a program to train psychic spies to spy and use their powers against Russia. John Ronson writes about this in The Men Who Stare at Goats. The first known sighting of a ghost took place right after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated uh, in the late 1860s during the administration of Ulysses Grant. Project Paperclip, Clinton releases it all in 1998. Possibly the unequal cooling of a surface. I say to you, still think it's a meteor, Professor. I don't know what to think. The uh, metal casing is definitely extraterrestrial. It's a place where UFO hunters and scientists gather to examine paranormal activity in the region. Some of the documents, this is bringing Nazi scientists into the United States to work here. So we fought against the Nazis. And it's not, this again is not a revelation. As early as 1947, 1946, we knew some of this, right? On the paranormal, will we see U.S. President Barack Obama's foreign policy go intergalactic in a quest for gold stolen by aliens? We'll tell you at least how the White House responded to claims the chief executive has been teleporting to Mars. But let's get to today's Capitol account. UFOs, hauntings, 
psychic abilities, conspiracy, ESP, cryptozoology. There are many things that remain unexplained in the inexplicable world around us. And we're talking about them here, looking for answers on WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. The truth is out there. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Glenn Allen. And like I'm going to remind everyone, she is she is running a business at the same time that she's talking to us. So I'm so grateful that she can talk to us and multitask at the same time. So just be aware if you hear some weird noises in the background, it's not spiritual. It's work. <laughs> so so um, she is here and. Uh, We've been talking about all kinds of different things today. Stuff we don't usually talk about. We don't talk a lot about UFOs, so this is this has been kind of interesting. So, um, so Gwen, yes, I'm here. So, I told you I, that's all I needed was them two minutes to make that drink. <laughs> I I know. I'm just making sure that you're you're here. Um, if if somebody wanted to find you, what's the best way to find you? The best way to find me is to find me on Facebook at Gwen Allen on Facebook, or they can look up Stone Paranormal Community on Facebook. That's my group. Or they can go to our YouTube, and that is um, Gorilla, G-O-R-R-I-L-L-A. I I spelt it differently. You know, entertainment. Okay. you know, yeah, Gorilla Mafia Entertainment LLC Media on this. But if they go to my, um, if they go ahead and they go and they get me on Facebook, they can find out all that information right there under Gwen Allen. Perfect. Just in case something happened and we lost you somewhere along the way, I, and or we forgot to ask, I just want to make sure we got it in the middle of this. So, and I already shared all this information in the chat room so that they're already there so that people can go scope click on the links, but, um, what do you have coming up? Event-wise? What I have, um, this week, what I have coming up on my show is that we're getting ready to do Virginia city and with Virginia city. We're going to be doing the, the, um, the Mackey mansion in Virginia city. And we're also going to be doing historical sites up there. We're going to go Carson city. We're going to go up towards Reno and we're going to also be able to go up towards, you know, um, the first place we're going to head up to is Lake Tahoe while we're there. But the main thing is the, um, doing the Mackey mansion that's in Virginia city. That's the newest thing that we got going on. And with my production company, we're getting ready because we just got our press passes for the United Nation is going to be here in Salt Lake City for the first time doing a lot of climate train, you know, control and, you know, global warming type stuff and all those things. So we're going to be covering that for three days. And then we have the um, Operation Underground Outreach Program that we got going on right now. That you know that we got that we do a charity event for Irie Coffee Teas and Bobas. Okay, that so sounds we, like a, interesting. I know my daughter loves boba. Oh, I got almost three hundred and something different flavors in bobas. Because right here, you know, like I said in Utah, like we're number one that's raining on the boba drinks because we have so many different combinations and flavors. And plus all the coffees and all the teas that we have, we carry those and we also create those into bobas too. When you said you said you're going to be doing um, Virginia City and Reno, I wanted to bring up this to everyone. Goldfield, Nevada, Red, he fell and he broke his hip. If you guys, anybody knows anything about the Goldfield Hotel, right now they're, they've suspended doing tours there for a while because he broke his hip and his son doesn't want to have tours going on right now. So if everybody could say a prayer for Red. Um, so... So needless to say, I'm so I'm glad I didn't schedule uh, a tour or an overnight there because we were talking about it uh, for when we went to Vegas this next time. But 
they've closed that down for right now. So anybody planning on going to Goldfield in the next few weeks, make sure you check before you go. <laughs> You so, know what? That's a good. That's a good thing to do. You know what I'm saying? We have the paranormal hotline going on. That you know, let you know ahead of time what it is. But I think that my whole purpose of going to Virginia City is is that it's been calling me, and I think that's what ends up how I end up going to a lot of locations. Is that it's like all of a sudden I just feel this tingling, and I'm just like, you know what? Huh, I got to go there, you know, something. And then, and, you know, and everybody's like, they're thinking like, well, I got to go do the wash. Shoe. I got to do, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I want to go to the Mackie mansion because it was calling me. I want to hit the cemeteries up. I want to see the history. I want to see some of the mines that are going on there. And I want to, I want to just get a little, a little taste on what makes Virginia city tick. You know, what's going on? Because once I get that feeling what's going on, then I'm going to understand what kind of spirits that are that are going on in that area right there. And we'll see what we can find. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know. It could turn into a full blown paranormal investigation or it can turn into a full blown historical documentary. You never know how it's going to go either or you're still getting some knowledge. Oh, yeah. Virginia City is one of the places that we've talked about wanting to go up that way and, and check it out. Because we, we, like I said, we've driven as far as Tonopah, we, you know, from Vegas. But, you know, once you drive from Kansas City all the way to there, you don't want to drive anymore. So, you sure don't. <laughs> you I know. know. I just made that ride. So I'm, I'm agreeing with you 1,000%. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you. It's like that that drive is like a drag, man. It's like your energy. After you get to the end of it, you're just like, yeah, I just want to go home and go to sleep. Well, I mean, you went to a Paracon in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, is what Ron calls it. Um, and he used to make that drive from St. Louis to the other side of Arkansas down there all the time as a kid. So we knew approximately where it was, and we still didn't care for that drive. <laughs> so, And we didn't come from Utah. I'm going to tell you, it, it's like this. I went from being a humidity baby to not having no humidity at all. And then when I went back down there and I got a little taste of that humidity, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I don't know what's going on out here. I, I felt my head was starting to hurt, everything like this. I was like, mm-mm. I said, I'm only glad that I'm going to be down here for a little while because I, I don't even think I could take that weather no more. Oh, and then you were lucky you left because the next day, it, it's all it did was rain. <laughs> Girl, it was raining the whole time we was there. Oh, it was because we got down there Friday. We got down there Friday night, and you had already left. So yeah, because I because I was already there since Thursday. Right. You know, so when we got down there, it was raining, and it's like sporadic. Like one minute it'd be like, oh look, it's beautiful. Next thing you know, I was like, I was having flashbacks of Florida. You know, like because this time of the year right now, it's, it's guaranteed it's gonna rain. Oh yeah, you made me laugh. We we were sitting there. We were playing um, cards against humanity with the with the team with Dwayne and Sherika and Lauren and Ghost Crier, and uh, so we're sitting there. This is after you left, and I saw this video come up that you had <laughs> done, and you were saying, "I'm here talking to my good friend Chris Crier," and all I could do was laugh. And go, Ron goes, "What are you laughing at?" I said. Apparently, she's not that close with Chris <laughs> because she called him Chris Cryer and I started laughing. You, you know why? He and was he, exhausted. He got, he, he, he got me on that one, too. And I said, Chris, I said, I am sorry. I said, I, I'm sorry I got you mixed up. I said, you know what? My brain is going a thousand miles a minute. And when they was looking for me to do my panel, it's like Dwayne went out there and he goes, um, he goes, I'm going to go get Gwen right now. Because since she's been here, she's just been wandering off and running in circles. And all because things, because everything was calling. So, and it's like, I only latched on to certain people when I got there. So, you know, I was just sitting out there having my little legs crossed and I was chilling out and I was talking and then as I turned and Chris did that and I said you know what I said I'm so sorry I said my brain right now is not connecting on all of the you know the neutrons and everything that it's doing we just made that long ride you know you know I was nervous <laughs> okay and it's like you know and when we got there you know it's like when you 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 come to some place and you never know and then when we got the dog patch and then you know it's kind of spooky anyways you know you get in there and it's like this old abandoned like you know amusement, amusement park, park and with squatters including squatters 
Oh yeah, I seen them. What they had? They the ones that had that dog that was a wolf, right? Yeah. Okay, because that dog, I was looking at that dog. I was like, ooh, that dog is so pretty. Because I love animals, man. And now I was sitting there, and I was, and I was, and I, and then when I finally got down to talking to Chris, and then me and him, and, and then I realized, I said, you know what? I said, I'm so happy that I'm in talking. I said, because we had so much in common. We started talking about shamanism. We started talking about sweat lodges. We started talking about spirits. We started talking about the spirits of the land. And the next thing you know, we were interviewing each other. And then I just saw this spot that it only had a teepee. And I said, yo, Chris, I said, I said, this is where we need to do our interview and everything. And then all of a sudden it's like the spirit came on me and started trying to choke me out. Didn't want me to talk. And I had that for the first time I'm like in an interview or something. I felt like I couldn't talk. And I told him, I said, cause I said, we're going to, I said for the first time in my life, I said, I got to retake this. And then it happened again. And then I looked at him and I said, there's something out here that doesn't want me to keep talking about what it is that I'm talking. It's trying to shut me up and I'm not going to let it shut me up. Well, that land there, it's got to be cursed. For some, I mean, considering the fact, I mean, first of all, the thing that made me go, why in the heck would you put an amusement park this far away from every everything? I mean, it was no, there was nothing close by. And it was hard to figure out how to even get in the darn place. Okay. That's what, let me tell you what happened. We got <laughs> lost coming into that dang thing. The, no, the wait, GPS, wait. Sent, GPS no, sent us. Into a whole, all into the backwoods, out of down. We had to cross over a creek in the road, everything. And then my mom, she was sitting there like, we were like, where are we going and everything? (laughs) Believe me, I know, because it sent us the same way. We pulled into this restaurant that was at the top of the thing. Because my husband's going, he's yelling at me. I'm like, I've never been here before. (laughs) And so I'm laughing. And so we go into this restaurant. And I, I tell the lady, I asked the lady, I said, where's the paranormal conference at? And she goes, see those balloons? And I'm like, no. She goes, there's balloons out there. She goes, there's a road. And she goes, it's hidden behind those trees. Go down that road. And I'm like, okay. And then in the meantime, she showed us around the restaurant, which was really neat. Um, the building out there by the, where the hotel was, that not the one that you stayed in, because <laughs> that was in Branson, but <laughs> the hotel that was attached to the property. And so she showed us around this this restaurant, and so we we enjoyed that. But we, you know, so you know, we went down that road that, that was very questionable. But coming back, that road didn't look the same when we came back as when we went down it. I don't know if it was like that for you, but it seemed like a different road when we came back of it up it than when we went down it. Listen, that's exactly how it was when it first started, like this, you know, and uh, we couldn't find anything. And you know what? And that was the way that that came, and and everything else just like that. And it was and it was just weird. It was. And I, you know, when I first moved to Arkansas, that that was this was back in 1981. Okay, when I first moved to Arkansas, Dog Patch USA was on the front cover of every uh, guide. You know, all these tourist magazines and stuff that when you would come into the state, that was on the front page of every guide when you would come into the state. So, apparently, you know, back then it was the place to go, but yet it still never made any money. But, you know, we, but it changed, it changed hands by so many people and everybody that land had to be cursed. or There had to be something that was going on because everybody who had something to do with that property, they either lost money or it changed hands so many times. And it's just to finally that, you know, financially, it just went under. But I don't understand if it was a hot spot during that day, then it should have been making money. It never was a hot spot. That's the thing. It never did what it was, what they thought it would do because of the fact that it was so far out there and not too far from it is Silver Dollar City in Branson, which is just like an hour away. So yeah. the timing was wrong. The location was wrong. And, you know, Ron, like I said, my husband, they used to go that way all the time because his parent, his family lived just in that in that part of Arkansas. And they would go, OK, you guys want to go to Dog Patch? And they would get it almost there, and the kids would go, no, we just want to keep on going. So even the kids didn't want to go. So Man, I, there's something we, about that place. 
And then there was that one child that died on that slide. Yeah, that, and that was actually a factual thing that did happen. But I'd say it just seems strange, though, that some of these old ride buildings that are there, that people are living in them. And I'm like, this is very odd that people are living in some of these buildings. Like, the, where they had you speaking, in that building right there to the, to the right of where you were speaking, that looked, looked kind of like an igloo kind of thing, like a dome. Yeah, somebody, somebody, it looked like, somebody honey, lived, it looked like a honeycomb. Yeah, somebody lived in there. Can you Are believe you that? serious? No, yes, I'm completely serious. Wow. And I was, I mean, I'm not judging them because you need to live someplace, but does anybody know? I mean, is it okay for them to live there? I don't well, know. Well, you know, I'm surprised that the city hasn't came in and condemned that spot yet because, you know, if people are on their property. Yeah, yeah. That, that there was parts of that that was completely unsafe. Did you make it back to the waterfalls? Um, no, no, I didn't. I, I, may, I went over the side where they had that um that water mill at where they had the water wheel and all that stuff. And I did my um that all of that's on um YouTube also that you know what the little investigation and stuff because I heard some you know some crazy things that you know that were happening and I was just like uh, you know it was just a, a few weird things did happen but something just I was just my whole thing was is that where were all of these dang places they were going and they were just leading to nothing it's like if you look at the bridge it's like you knew that there was something that was there then it just led to nothing it just dipped off into nothing you went to a building it just it was there and then it just dipped off into nothing and I'm just like you know I'm like it, I don't know that place was just weird it was really weird it was interesting but it was weird it was, and, you know, I'm glad I got to go the one time. I don't know if I'll ever go back, but I know I'm glad I got to go the one time. So, it was an experience. It was an experience for sure, you know, it, as it was. going on, you know, it just like that. It was an experience, to, you know, and, I, you know, I'm happy that we were able. It was a good family trip. You know, we were out there. It was a straightforward, you know, going to dog patch and coming back. But it seems like where we were staying at in Branson, I think where you said that's called Silver City or oh, Silver, Silver Dollar City was just down the street from the, not too far from the hotel we all stayed at. And I'm going to so, tell you something. Now, that place looked like it was like a little bitty um, Nevada up there. Oh, it, well, it is, but a Christian one. Oh. Uh, there's no um, no gambling, no cussing. Um, everything is very Christian and, and stuff like that. It always has been. But there's a lot of moonshine now, distilleries up there. Um, that's that, that's the latest and greatest. Um, because that's just... There, there's like a four different moonshine distilleries in that area right now that have just opened up in the last five years. So I'd never been to Branson until about six years ago. And so, you know, we got to experience it. But that little hotel that we all stayed at for the price was excellent. And they, they, treat, they were really nice. We kind of offended the lady playing, we're, you know, Cards Against Humanity. But, you know. She had to grow a little skin <laughs> and get over it. <laughs> because, you know, anybody who's played Cards Against Humanity knows it's it's not politically correct. I know my it's husband, awesome. Chris, he loved, that. he loved that game. Him and his friends, they'd just be sitting there playing it and giggling to themselves and everything. And I and I, I listened in on one time and I was like, oh, wow. I was like, I was like this game is kind of wild. <laughs> it is. We, we had a really good time. We, that was the first time we ever played. But... And now it's one of those things we've got to play if if we got a chance. I just don't know if I want to play with my kids. <laughs> so. yeah, well, you know that it has one of them parental, you know, ratings on it. I wouldn't, you know, kind of commit it to be, you know, with your kids and all those things just like that. That's my just kids one of the adults. That's the, my oh. kids are adults, so oh. I still don't know if I want to play with my kids. <laughs> 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 I don't want them to know that I think like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, then they but, have a new perception of my, you know a mom and all those things but you know but, but it was like I said it was something that I've never done before and it was worth going out there and you know it and it made a good little documentary series you know about what was going on I didn't stay for none of the investigations like during the nighttime and everything so I mostly did all my stuff during the daytime and then you know what well, because we drove all the way from Utah and then you know 
we had to drive all the way back. So it was like it was like an in and out type kind of situation. So that's why I didn't get to see everybody. Yeah, when we got there um, that evening, we got there when everybody was getting back from speaking. And we asked, um, asked when I'm going to be here. And they go, she's already left. And I said, darn. I said, I was hoping to get to talk to her. And they said, no, um, we didn't get to, to, to see you. And so I was a little bit disappointed um, that we didn't get to meet up. So but um, you didn't, what, you didn't what, know. What, what part of area are you um, are you in? We're, we're in eastern Kansas. Way because I'm to, I think in the beginning of the year, I'm getting ready to go to Idaho to, um, to do an investigation up in Buxton. Oh, yeah. We're way the other direction. We, oh, me, okay. and, me and Ron travel a lot of places, but you know what? I think we're at our next break. So everyone, you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. Please come back and we'll get in our last 15 minutes of the show and we'll be waiting for you. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight has been the very animated and very entertaining Gwen Allen. I hope you guys will go out there and find her on Facebook and find all of her links out there so that you guys can like them and find out more about where she's going to be and what she's going to be doing. And if you're ever in Salt Lake City, Utah, make sure you look up her cafe and go get yourself a boba drink. Or if you're into coffee, get yourself a coffee drink. But you can also have boba in your tea. So you guys can go out and check that out. So what what else do you want us to know about Gwen Allen before the show is over? You know, it's just pretty much, you know, it's, I'm just on a paranormal journey, a journey right now. I'm, you know, a spiritual journey to be able to see how far, you know, that, that I can go. And, you know, and it's like, we got a lot of people that, you know, that are out there that need help. And I just want people to feel that, you know what, that the, the paranormal spirits, all that stuff is real. You know, people have caught evidence. People have, you know, felt things. People, if we're living, then you know what? Then we're going to pass on. And there is other side. We just don't understand it. And that's exactly what we're doing. And that's what I'm doing right now. And I always tell people, I said, happy hunting. You know, open up your mind to different resources and different people. Don't judge somebody because they're, you know, because it's not a religious thing. This has nothing to do with that. But you know what? There's our aspects of religion that can help you because there's are certain situations and paranormal that you know what that you might need somebody like me that does cleansing that does house cleansings that does exorcisms that know about demonology you know readers and all those things and you know what and it's like i just want people to open up their minds more to this and just understand that not everything is just demons 
you know, not everything is bad and everything and this. And it's not all about getting ratings and getting evidence. It's about putting the information out there and putting it out there so that everybody can relate to it and that people can stop being afraid. You know, when, people- yeah, when you talk about doing cleansings and cleansings and clearings, what is the best way to do an, a general clearing? It all depends on the situation, honestly. Sometimes there's a, there's a way to do a general clearing, and that's why a lot of people use white sage and use holy water and all those things just like this. But it all depends on the situation. And sometimes the best thing is, is that you need to find somebody that's a credible and that has the, you know, that has done it before and that, you know, that knows what's going on before, you know, and, and try to get in contact with them. Because there's a, there's there's people out there that can, you know, help you in those things instead of you just going out there willy nilly and throwing some stuff together and not knowing what you're doing, not knowing the prayers or all of those things just like that. So there's a lot that entails to that. And I tell people, I said, do you know what? Knowledge is power. The best thing to do is to read up on how to protect protect yourself before you even go into those kind of situations. Now, what's the best way to protect yourself? The best way to protect yourself is, first of all, know what, know exactly what it is that you're walking into. OK, and that means, second of all, no, knowing that you don't want to bring anything back to your family. So I tell people there's certain crystals, there's certain stones, there's certain things that you can carry with you. You know, that, and, and certainly just the, the most important tool that you have is yourself and the limitations that when you go in there, you were like, listen, this is my body. This is my mind. This is my soul. And you have no power over me. I'm just here to do an investigation, do what I got to do. Come in here, get my, you know, the evidence to do the history and all of those things. And I want to walk out the same way that I walked in. The mind is the greatest tool that you the, the most positive tool that you possibly can have. And, and you have the right to say, get off me. Don't come home. But, you know, so that means don't go in there provoking stuff. Don't go in there, you know, being disrespectful. Don't go in there faking stuff and doing all of them things just like this. Just walk in there, do what it is that you that, that your passion is. Get it done. Understand that you know what, that there are causes and consequences of the actions and things that you do. But I tell people, I say, try to carry some crystals, put some kind of protection, you know, carry your cross, carry your rosary, you know, and be respectful when you go into locations. Has there ever been a a location that you've been to where the person who owns the location or is managing the location said that you cannot wear your Christian protection in their home or their business? Oh my goodness. There's some of these locations out here. I can go better than that. That I actually come and tell you that if you're going to go and investigate into this location, that you're not allowed to get rid of the spirits that are there. You're not allowed to do, you know, to do anything because they need those spirits to stay there so they can keep making money because it's a haunted spot. Well, I've been, I've heard of, that there are some locations that don't allow you to wear your crucifix for your own protection in their location. Then guess what? I would not be going into that location. It's not worth it. That's my thought as well. So because if, because if you're not letting me come up in there and protect myself, then that means that you know what you're willingly want me to go and invite myself into that space. So whatever that's in there can use my body or or jump on me or do whatever. So you, I feel like it's a setup. So I'm not going to go up in there because I'm like, why wouldn't you want me to protect myself? That's the first question that's going to come into my face. Why wouldn't you want me to have this kind of, you know, everything that is like this? And so that right there, that's a red flag. And I wouldn't even go do I don't care how haunted it is. I'm not going to put myself and my team in jeopardy because of that. Yeah, you're right. I'm right with you on that. Next thing. Do would you prefer to investigate a private residence or a a place that you know a public location you know what at this precise moment in time i don't discriminate because i go in with the same mentality that i would do in a um, in a private location or a public one like this i'm there to help or to find out what it is that is what why the place is the way that it is like this so but the thing about 
private locations and private homes, then you have a lot to deal with people and their family, their animals, their dogs, you know, then the story becomes a little bit more personal and it becomes a little bit more, you know, that you get to, you get in there and you really want to help those people. And other than you going into a, a public location and you, there's the only attachment is there is a person that owned the building and some experiences that other people had as they were walking in there. It's more generalized. I tell you, you have given me a lot of what you've said is exactly things that I've said before. So you're just bringing the point that I've made home so many times. So we're going to ask another question here. This is one of my favorites. What do you feel about the flashlight trick? About the flashlight trick? Yeah. Girl, don't even get me started with that because you know what? That's a, I did a location that was here, and then that's the first thing that they did. They had a flashlight up in there, and that they'll ask the flashlight questions, and if it turned on, if it turned off, and then everybody like, ooh, you know. And I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking that you know what? With some of them, that 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 is, can be altered with in so many different ways that you know from here to Sunday you know you have to be the one I want to be the one that actually twist the bat put the new batteries in do everything and put it on that floor there's no shaking there's no movement of the floors and for me that that's that that's that debunking side of me that I I just I just can't wrap my hands head around that one I'm going to tell you here's my thought the minute that they can take that big 12 that big battery one with a big hard button to push down and to turn that on i'll believe it then oh thank you me too the old school ones the ones that got the big handle yeah. on look like a little purse no yeah, mag, lights. mag lights are just too well ron is ron is a uh, electronics technician and batteries build up and they release and build up and release and it's just me i'm i'm sorry but i i don't find any validity mm-hmm. so here, here's the next thing. Carl asks, what do you think about um, the Connect, the SLS or the Connect? Do you ever use that, the one that creates the stick figures? Oh my goodness! I, that's the big, that's the new rave now, huh? That's what's going on in the streets is the S them that that, that right there because I noticed a lot of people are getting on it. Let me tell you something. That's another thing that kind of throws me off, okay? Because some of them things can be put inside that or you know programmed, you know, and all those things just like that. So that I kind of don't I don't kind of go by messing with that. I rather use my feelings and, and my abilities and all those things because if something is next to you or something jumping or dancing on your shoulder in your auretic field you're gonna feel it okay you don't need no camera to sit there and do i think that that's more of a visual for people so that they can see it you know and then they can you know it i don't know if it's entertainment value i don't you know the validity of it some people swear by it and you know what and i'm not gonna knock them for using it or anything like this but me and my reprobore i don't use that okay very fair so we are in the last five minutes of the show And so I'm going to let you take one more chance to tell everybody where they can find Gwen Allen. Everybody can find me here in Salt Lake City. They can find me on Facebook at Gwen Allen. They can also look us up here if they're ever in Salt Lake City at Irie Coffee Teas and Bobos. That's my family-owned cafe that's right here in West Jordan. And you know what? You, you can Google us at Irie Coffee Teas and Bobos. You can Google us Stone Paranormal. You can look for us on Facebook at Stone Paranormal Community. You know, that's our group that we have going on. And we also have um, our YouTube. YouTube channel and that is Gorilla Mafia Entertainment LLC Media and you can go and we have like um at least 35 episodes now that is on YouTube and we're also getting ready to go on Soul Central TV which is out in the UK that's up in London and you know what and pretty much that I'm the best way to get to me is to find me on Facebook right now and that's at Gwen Allen because that's what I answer all my messages and everything else from Perfect. And the next event that you're going to be at at is going to be, are you doing any paranormal events anytime real soon? Yes. Matter of fact, I'm leaving Thursday to go to Virginia City. I'm getting ready to do the Mackey Mansion. Okay. So you guys watch for videos on that. And I know I'll be wait, waiting for that one to see what, what happens there. And I can't wait. And everyone, 
next week, this coming Saturday, is SpookshowCon, and I will be there with Ron and Tom and all of the, the lovely guests that have been on the Paranormal Pride in the last few months, such as Rick Wade, uh, Frank Bennett, Kelly McCarville, all of them. We're going to be doing, hopefully be doing some live videos from that. So hopefully you guys can, if you can't make it, hope you can make it to the event. It's only $20. If you're needing information, go to spookshowcon.com. If you need more information than the website gives you, please contact me or Tom McNicholas, and we will give you that information. I am le- So I hopefully will see all of you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on Saturday morning, because that's where I'll be, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, there in DeKalb, Illinois. So everyone, my guest, I don't know who my guest is on Monday. I might be having a replay. replay. I might be having a go-over of spook show con and i might be having a guest i haven't decided yet i figured i'd wait and see how i felt this week so everyone thank you so much gwen for being on i appreciate it and i look forward to all the things that you have coming up and i know that we're going to be seeing hearing you on this network again probably sometime very soon and (laughs) and and good luck with all the things that you have going on i hope everyone will come back and listen to cat show on wednesday here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. And you guys have a great week. And thank you for having me. And you guys have a good one now. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Warning, the following message does not necessarily reflect the views of WBHMDB or its hosts, guests, listeners, or of any functioning adult in general. In fact, Frank should probably seek professional help. Listener discretion is advised. Hi there, Frank Lee here. I thought that I would spend a few moments telling you about the positivity from the network here. Uh, the overall message of para unity and happiness and how everyone here wants to get along with everyone out there and how everything is just wonderful. Wait, Cat's not looking. Uh, Okay, I've got something to really tell you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what's really going on. Honestly, all that being nice and positive crap is kind of hurting my soul, as dark as it is. So, what's really happening? When you see it all the time, Everybody and their brother out there has a paranormal team because they watch a couple of episodes of Ghost Hunters or some crap like that. So they go and they spend half their mortgage payment on tools and things that light up that they don't understand. And then the next logical step after buying matching black t-shirts and posing like 90s rappers for their Facebook page is to of course have their own podcast. Well, you know what? You're not gonna find that crap here. What we have here at WBHM Digital Broadcasting is the best host, the best guest, bringing you real information. All of the hosts here on this network know their stuff. They are the people who have been out there doing the work, doing actual research. And no, by research, I don't mean binge watching some kind of cheesy TV show on Netflix. I mean reading books. I mean out in the field doing the lay work. And who are they interviewing on their shows? They're bringing you the people they have learned from. They're bringing you the best in the field covering all kinds of topics from UFOs and aliens to Bigfoot to cryptozoology to ghosts to anything you can think of a bit strange and unexplained it is here and you're going to get the best information here so stay tuned 
to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Don't go anywhere. Speaking of going somewhere, I've got to go before my mic gets cut. We'll see you there on WBHM DB.